morning. Thank you for joining us. We'll be starting shortly in about three minutes. We'll be starting. We're just looking for other people to join in. Thank you.
as well. Okay, good, good morning, everyone. Uh, happy Easter to you all. Uh, happy Ramadan fast to most of us. My name is Dr. Abuba, personal physician, Living Hospital Central. Here yeah, yeah, with me is Nansbera. So we are, it, right? yes, we are staffs of Lemi Hospital and Maternity. In pregnancy, why, why is it an issue? Basically, we fit in uh, pregnancy, and those are signs that once you see, you have to your healthcare provider. And basically, uh, it comes with all sorts of uh, unfavorable and uncomfortable miles, and in some in few cases, they are quite severe. So today we want to talk to you about those severe issues that once you see the sign, you report. And we are saying this because um, most times people ignore some of those issues mm -hmm. that come and they think it's a normal thing. Yes. And before you know it, by the time they are presenting to the hospital, issues, don't bear it. Pregnancy uh, comes with yes, it's a unique yes, yes, pregnancy different for the experience is different for different people. Yeah. What your friend shared with you about her experience can be different from what you share with the experience. Yeah. So not well, I don't know if you want to say anything about the danger signs in pregnancy. Okay, so uh, what are the signs of pregnancy? The, the danger that a woman should be expecting. Yes. Like, yeah, like, like I said, the, the, the danger signs are considered to be warning signs. Okay. And um, it's whether to be warning signs. The first instinct is to reach out to your healthcare provider, not to try to call the pharmacy or call your friend to see wants to see those things, they are healthcare providers. So the first thing we want to talk about is reduced or absent movement in the, when you are pregnant. In pregnancy, it is expected that by at least 16 weeks, you should start perceiving some form of uh, movement in your uh, of the baby. The, well, of course, most people don't get to feel it at that point, but it's okay. We, we, but for those ones who are perceptive enough, they, they, they can tell you that they felt some sensations and you understand, but as the pregnancy begins to go, you begin to feel something like kicks, understand, floating sounds and swishing sounds. Okay, doctor, can I ask a question? Yes, because please. I know that some of the women out there, mm -hmm. they don't know what means the absent beta or reduced beta kick. Good. How do we, when, which month do we expect the beta kick and how, do, how are we going to know that the baby kick has reduced. Yes, good. So in um, pregnancy, we what we say we call it the first uh, the first um, perceptive way, which is period of quickening, quickening and yes. it happens at sixteen weeks of your pregnancy. That's slightly into it or some weeks into the second trimester. Okay. But bear in mind that most people do not get to perceive anything. So if you don't feel anything at your sixteen, we don't be afraid. But okay. it is expected that that's when you start feeling the down movement. Now, in everybody, like everybody, have different pregnancy experience. Yeah. There are some people that know the amount of times so that they are really keep regular. Okay. So what we advise is that generally is that if you feel like okay, the rate at which your baby is kicking is not what you should know. Your first instinct is to try and pay attention and check. 
if there is a problem, if within some hours there is nothing, then you can quickly reach out to your doc a doctor. In To so put a time, let's say eight o'clock in the morning, okay. and between eight to ten, you now try to record the amount of times you feel a movement, which means the movement could be a kick, it could be just an abnormal sensation, a swishing sound, or it's, it's a fluttering sound. Anyone could be counted, and within two hours, it's expected for you to have at least ten kicks. If you have at least ten kicks within two hours, it is okay. That is objectively speaking. If you have less than 10 kids, then you should be worried. You should sit and reach out to uh, your healthcare provider. The reason why this is important is that one of the ways we know that the baby is healthy okay. is that the baby is active, active. and moving. Yes, we agree okay. that there are some times that the baby will sleep when you are awake, and so there might be some confusion. But the fetal uh, kick chart helps us to objectively ascertain if the mm. baby is actively moving. But bear in mind, I'm saying that if you cannot do the fetal teacher, different people have different patterns. If you feel in yourself that, okay, I don't think that this baby is moving enough, I think you have uh, advice is just call your healthcare provider, reach out to your hospital as fast as possible for us to try and find out what the issue is. Okay, thank you very much. So we should have it at the back of our mind that baby should quit 10 times in two hours. Yes, that is okay. the expectation. So if you decide that you want to check if objective, it reduces below that, yes. But if there's a result, yes, then it means that you should reach out that there might be a problem. Just also to reiterate, that could be a sign. If your baby is not moving actively or there's a reduce or after movement, it's a sign that your baby is in distress. And the earlier you reach out for intervention, the better for um, the outcome of the baby. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So um, we also want to talk about other danger signs, headaches and blood visions. Generally, one of the normal, ex one of the expected, I won't say normal experience, is headaches. In pregnancy, you are likely to experience headaches more often than when you are not pregnant. That uh, is one of those expected experience for some people. But in some situations, headaches and blurring of vision could become a problem, a sign of an impending problem. And so once you begin to notice that the headache is severe and frequent and is coming with some blurring of vision or dizziness, you should be worried, especially when your pregnancy is about 20 weeks or more. Okay. You understand? So yes, you have mild headache, you think it's malaria, you want to take a paradox, and you notice that the headache is persistent. You notice some dizziness. You should be worried. Call your healthcare provider. Or the first thing you should do is to check your blood pressure because that's where we are going at. One of the same signs and symptoms of what we call pre severe preeclampsia is headache and blurring of vision. Um, and as well, I do want to enlighten them on what uh, preeclampsia is. Okay, to my best knowledge about pre preeclampsia is when. All these signs, my doctor just said, this duration and headache, please, it's one of the signs anyway. And at that point, you don't need to stay at home. Please don't do self-medication. It's very, very bad at the pregnancy. Don't hesitate, rush to your hospital where you registered at NETA. Meet your doctor for thorough check -in. First, they need to check your BP, your blood pressure, to know how it is. Then they need to check other tests, lab investigation, and the rest. Then that determines what can lead to this headache, as we said. Doc, does pregnancy are really bad on pregnancy? Yes, pregnancy is, a, is considered a, a one of the Common or uh, the highest cause, one of the highest causes of uh, uh, maternal mortality in our environment. Uh, it comes with severe issues of damages to the mother and to the baby. Wow. Now, I would like to reiterate what uh, Osvera has said that one, once you notice 
persistent headache and blurring of vision, you should be worried. The next thing you should do is to check your blood pressure. But what we are advised is for you to come to the hospital. Preeclampsia basically is when you have an abnormally high blood pressure in pregnancy that is above 20 weeks of gestation. Once your breath and an abnormal high blood pressure, the baseline we put generally is 140 over 90. You understand? So once you notice blurring of vision, headache that is persistent, please, and you're pregnant and you are pregnant, come to the hospital. You understand? So abnormally high blood pressure, we, there's a reason why you come to the hospital and we check your blood pressure all the time. There's a reason why you come to the hospital and want to check your urine. These are the things that we are looking for. One other thing that we look out for also is abnormally excessive leg swelling. In our clinical term, we call it edema, but once you notice that both years, most women come in with swollen feet, not all the time it's associated with the cancer. But if you notice that your sweet feet are beginning to swell, it is a reason for you to come to the hospital and assess care. And just like I said earlier, the problem with eclampsia is the complications that can arise from eclampsia. One of those complications can cause multi-organ damage to the mother, and it can also cause loss of the baby, if not attended to promptly. There's something we call eclampsia, which is a complication of the eclampsia. That's where you have an abnormally high blood pressure okay. and convulsion. In fact, sometimes once you get to that point, more often than not, it is difficult to salvage the situation. It is only by the grace of God the person survives. So the earlier you present it because to when you notice these signs and symptoms, the better. Okay, Doc, can I ask a question? Yes. Please. Can this preclusion lead to uh, threaten? On the in the well, in the for us to stand up and preeclampsia is basically a spectrum of uh, hypertension in pregnancy. We call it a pregnancy induced hypertension. Okay. When you get to preeclampsia, more often than not, you are beginning to see those danger signs on the livers, on the kidneys, on the brains, and even on the baby. And for us to make the a definition of preeclampsia, that pregnancy should be at least 20 weeks. So yes, once you are diagnosed with severe pregnancy, there's a threat to the mother, and there's also a threat to the baby. So that is why it's important to present so that actions can be taken immediately for us to salvage both the health of the mother. Please, um, we have a Q&A session on, on our platform. Please feel free to have questions. We are happy to answer those questions and explain further if you have any concerns or any confusion um, on, on what we are discussing so far. So um, uh, we have already mentioned swelling of the face, uh, swelling of the legs, are all part of the symptoms you should look out for in your class. So another danger sign we are going to be talking about is vaginal bleeding. So yes, a, a, a woman that is not pregnant every month is expected for her to see her menstruation, which is part of her menstrual cycle. That is expected, that is normal for her. But the moment a woman is confirmed pregnancy, any form of vaginal bleeding is considered a threat. Vaginal bleeding in early pregnancy, which we call the first trimester, the first 13 weeks, yeah. is what we call miscarriage. Yes. You understand? Yeah. It's either it's a threatening miscarriage or an incomplete miscarriage. But vaginal bleeding happening from any from the third trimester up until 10 pregnancy is what we call an anti antipartum hemorrhage. And those uh, that can be an issue. Understand. Uh, basically, the bleeding, when you have vaginal bleeding at this point, you are trying to identify what are the common the reasons why you're bleeding. But the likely causes of those bleeding are likely to be considered a danger, is what we call one, an abruptio placenta. Abruptio placenta is when the placenta abnormally pulls out from the uterus. And the reason why it's a problem is because the placenta's function is to serve the baby, provide supply of oxygen, provide supply of food and nutrients. Now, that imagine that there is a cut off of that connection between the mother and the baby. What happens? 
the child loses everything and so the child goes into distress and possibly leads to death. It is an emergency because the moment that supply is cut off, it's going to take within minutes for this to affect the baby and the mother. So once you notice vaginal bleeding within your third trimester, the third trimester is the last three months of your pregnancy. You are 36 weeks, you are 35 weeks. I notice, and if, even if it is spotting, you should come to the hospital because it will be a sign that there is an impending danger. The other cause of vaginal bleeding that would to raise concern is what we call the placenta previa. The placenta previa is an issue because it can lead to excessive bleeding in the mother that can affect both the mother and the baby. What happens in placenta previa? The placenta ideally is supposed to be located at the upper part of your womb that is close to your chest. Now, the placenta will go and cover where your baby is supposed to come out. Remember, the cervix is where your head of the baby is supposed to come out. So the placenta is, the location of the placenta now shifts to that entrance. So instead of pushing the baby's head out, you are pushing the placenta out. And what happens? The placenta is a delicate tissue supplied with all sorts of uh, vessels. It will begin to bleed, and the bleeding is excessive. If nothing is done, the woman can bleed to death, and it also can affect the baby. That's why it is an important thing. I want to remind you again, first trimester bleeding is a sign of either a miscarriage or a pregnancy that is located in an abnormal uh, site. Later pregnant uh, vaginal bleeding is a sign that you are having severe bleeding from either a placenta failure or an abruptional placenta. Once you see any of this, once you are pregnant and you see any form of spotting, it is considered an emergency until proven otherwise. Okay. What about the, let me ask the question. This about implantation. What weeks does it occur for a woman to notice a spot? Please, can you come again? Okay. The question goes like this. There is what we we'll call implantation. Okay, yes. and earlier pregnancy, yes, where some women notice a spot, yes, yes, we call them implantation bleeds, uh, and those bleeds are, 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 are occur in, in pregnancy, weeks? yes, in the early pregnancies within the fourth to six weeks. You okay. understand? So, if you notice bleeding and spotting at that time, yes, come to the hospital, we'll check and find out if there is an issue. Then we'll let you know. But most times, interpretation implantation beads have no issue. Once we establish that it's an interpretation bead, there are no issue because more often than not, the fetus is intact. But when you begin to notice bleeding, uh, excessive bleeding, and then we do a scan and we find out that go on, it's either you are trying to lose the pregnancy or the pregnancy is located in a different place. We all tell you, we know that those are the issues that we are concerned about when we talk about the vaginal bead. Now, uh, I would like to state again, do not, please, do not, once you see bleeding during pregnancy, your first step is not to take Panadol or take anything. Just reach out to your healthcare provider because it could be a danger to the mother and a danger to the child. And we are talking about complications that can happen so fast. If actions are not taken, it can lead to both the demise of the mother and the baby. So please let me remind you, please, we have the Q&A session. Please don't forget, don't forget to ask your questions. Um, the, one, another symptom we are going to talk about is, is sudden release of water from the vagina. There is this term that we use in movies where somebody will say, my water has broken. Yes, you see it in the movie. Once you see a water break, the next thing in the movie is them rushing the woman to the hospital to go and deliver. So yes, if your water breaks when your pregnancy is at 10, uh, 10 yes, it, it, it is expected that that is what should happen. And so you should proceed to the hospital for possible delivery of that. Baby. But when we now have a problem is when there is a release of that water, before your 10 pregnancy, what we consider a 10 pregnancy in Nigeria, a pregnancy that has started from 37 completed weeks. Yes, yes. A at 10, 10, yes, at 37 pregnancy, we call the pregnancy a, a 10 
pregnancy. Yes. You understand? So people will say nine months because people are used to months, but we like to use weeks. 37 weeks completed pregnancy is what you consider a ten pregnancy. So at 37 weeks, if you see your water break, you say, hey, okay, everything is normal. Now, why do we, uh, what we call water? We in our medical term, we call it lipo or amniotic fluid. Now, why is the amniotic fluid important? Every in, in pregnancy, the baby needs an environment to survive. And in order to survive, in that environment has certain characteristics, you understand? And so in that amniotic fluid, you have a sac lining, like a ladder lining the womb. And inside that ladder, there is water inside. We, we, let's call it water. But those water contain certain chemicals and certain nutrients that provide one nourishment to the baby, gives room for the baby to grow. If the mother is moving from here to there, there's enough space for baby to move in between water. That's why you see the baby turned upside down to be turned upside down to go. It's just an environment for the baby to go. You, you understand. Now, the problem with sudden release of water is that most times, once you have that, it means that there's a breach between the mother's uterus and the baby. And so that environment that gives room for baby to grow is begin to, beginning to get depleted. And that could be a problem for baby. So any breach, at 10 pregnancy, yes, is an indication that that baby needs to come out. Any breach before 10 pregnancy, at 25 weeks, at 30 weeks, at 40 weeks, you must come to the hospital. Now, I would like to highlight one thing. Some people, once they see that, because of the color of the water, people think it is pee, that they want to urinate, mm -hmm. that they think that it's pee. Please, always be clear, be sure of the difference between pee and this, I know the color of amniotic fluid, why it's clear and looks like water, the color is slightly different from P. It has an off-white color and it could be strong. So you make sure that once you see any, in fact, let's put it this way. Once you are not sure if it is P, just come to the hospital. Okay. Yes, because in order for you to urinate, yes, you should have the urge to urinate, except you are having issues with urination. You should have the urge to urinate and then go to the toilet to okay. urinate. But imagine that you are walking to the toilet, and then you notice that your underwear is wet. Okay. You are not sure. Just come to the hospital so that we can, can find out for you. Can I ask a question? Can infection set in? Yes. In One of the issues with breaking your water, breaking before the time of pregnancy, is the risk of infection. Okay. That risk of infection can be fatal to the mother, and it can also be fatal to the baby, especially if the baby is not at 10. So, those are the complications that we look out for whenever these things happen. Okay. So, from once you notice you are walking around, you notice your underwear is wet, or you went to the toilet and you tried to pee, and instead water poured came down and was washing on your thighs, and this, you instead of and you are not too sure if this is pee or if it's your normal urine. Please just come to the hospital and uh, we we'll examine and check and see what it is. Like I said, this could be an indication that. There is a breach in your amniotic fluid sac, and something needs to be done as fast as possible to salvage for the mother and the baby. Okay, so we should have it at the back of our mind. Women out there, my fellow women, please, whenever you notice of this, please rush to the hospital immediately for attention. Okay? So, um, one common thing to women to present to the hospital is back pain. Back pain. Back pain is very common in pregnancy. And yes, to be honest, to a significant extent, it's, it is expected, it's an unexpected experience once the baby begins to grow. Once the baby begins to get bigger, especially your daughter might say, due to pressure and weight of the baby, yes, you begin to experience back pain. So women complain about back pain a lot, but also bear in mind that not all back pain can be uh, as a result of baby growing. Back pain can be an indication that you are having, you are going into labor, you understand? One of the first experience you are likely to experience for some people they'll tell you is that they are having back pain or tightness, you understand? So the problem with having that is that in preterm labor, where your pregnancy is not up to the term, which we consider as 37 weeks, 
that could be an issue. It means that the pregnancy is trying to come out when we don't want it to come out. It means that the pregnancy is trying to come out when we don't want it to come out. Once you notice persistent back pain that is not resolving with changing posturing, with mild analgesics, and it is occurring frequently and in a, a sequence, please come to the hospital. Understand? It might be an indication of one, the fact that you are going into labor. It will also be a sign of a urinary tract infection. So please present to the hospital. Okay, Doc, I want to ask a question. This persistence of low back pain, can a posture cause it as in a sitting position? Can it cause leads to this? Posturing. Yes. Yes, posturing can cause, uh, in, fact, in fact, one of the commonest causes of back pain is posturing. So we advise on sitting positions, on line positions, on, yes, at the back, back just to, that works in all yes, and all that, to just, to, just to pushing those two. But more often than not, with those things, you expect that the pain should at least resolve or subside, or you should expect the frequency of pain to be less. But now you notice that this pain is there. You've done that. Then the next minute you are experiencing it is happening recurrently and more frequency and severity. It is an indication that there is something going on and should come back. More often than not, you are, you are actually having some contraction. And if a pretend contraction is not addressed as fast as possible, it can move into a pretend labor, yeah. and which will lead to delivery of a pretend baby. Just like I mentioned earlier, any pregnancy that is less than 37 weeks is considered a pretend pregnancy. And also other things to look out for, urinary tract infections, they can also trigger, they can also be a cause of low back pain, bladder infections, kidney infections, which are part of the spectrum of urinary tract infections, can lead to Nausea and vomiting in pregnancy is another sign we should look out for. One of the commonest symptoms of pregnancy is morning sickness. Yes, in fact, that's how in Nigerian films, once a young girl runs out of the house and vomits, no, the next the mother is, doing is trying to touch the breast for breast tenderness <laughs> and to see if, uh, yes. if something is going on. Exactly. The next thing she's in the hospital and she's pregnant, at least in our holy and Nollywood movies to watch. So it's one of the commonest symptoms in pregnancy. Now, it is expected, usually in nausea and vomiting, there are a lot of reasons why it happens, but most people experience it, especially within the first three months of their pregnancy. But in some cases, it could become unusually abnormal. Imagine vomiting persistently where you cannot put food in your mouth and you are vomiting. People come and say that they cannot put food in their mouth. And once food enters their mouth, it comes out immediately. Then you know that there's a problem. So once the person is vomiting frequently, five, six, seven times in a day, and unable to tolerate food, then you know that there's a problem. In that case, we say that this nausea and vomiting is severe. Now, what are the issues associated with severe nausea and vomiting? Imagine somebody that is not taking in food and is pouring out every food. What will happen? The person will lose weight the person will become severely dehydrated. And a malnourished and a dehydrated mother will not be able, will not be able to uh, go out her normal activities, one. Mm -hmm. Secondly, it's also going to be detrimental to the baby. So it is because of this effect that we advise that once you notice that you are, not, you are, you are vomiting excessively and you cannot tolerate anything to try to replenish, please present to the hospital. We call it, there's a medical name we call it for, we call it hyperemesis gravidarum, but in simple terms, it is severe vomiting in pregnancy. Like how many do we, we should expect to vomit in a day? Uh, like just that? like I said, some people, different, I mentioned earlier that different people have their own different experiences. Some people vomit four times in okay. a day and it's okay as far as they are eating and they are doing their normal things. Other people, three times, two times. But once it becomes, you must know that once it becomes excessive, okay. frequency, yeah. I'm talking about, like, yes, excessive, maybe like six, five, six times in a day, that's number one. But once you notice that it is not, you are taking food and it is not responding, and you want to take in your 
for meeting when people go surround you for meeting once it comes with weakness once it comes to weakness once it comes to this business then you know that there is a problem and you should come to the hospital because dehydration is a bad thing dehydration can one affect the mother it can also affect the baby then it will also make you lose weight and in order for you to have a healthy baby you have to be well nourished yes So um, uh, we also like to talk about contractions. Yeah. We also like to talk about contractions in, uh, in pregnancy, in, in early pregnancy. So we mentioned something about the preterm labor earlier. And uh, just like I said, anything that happens within the first the first uh, less than less than seven weeks is considered a a preterm pregnancy, a pregnancy, pregnancy, and from the seven away at above, at above is called full term pregnancy. Now, um, contractions could be a sign of preterm labor, and so some people might mistake a, a, a true labor from a false labor. So, in any pregnancy, if you begin to experience contractions you should present to the hospital now what does it feel like one you can have low abdominal pain that is moderate to severe you some people experience it as tightening as cramping and something similar to those that have uh, menstrual cramps so you have it in those situations please present to the hospital especially when you are in your early pregnancy state now, you could also be able to, for those who are in labor, to try to differentiate between a false labor and a regular labor. That a false labor, which people call the, which we call the prostatic labor, the contractions are not regular. They are mild, they are regular. So you experience a contraction now, and the next episode could be in 40 minutes' time, or in, and then the next one is in an hour time. All those ones are expected. They are normal as far as there is no bleeding and no other symptoms that we've mentioned. But once you uh, begin to express a true labor, contractions are regular. One, you notice that you are having more frequent contractions and they are regular. And if, you, if you try to be objective to check within the space of 10 minutes, you experience that the contractions are happening almost every 10 to 15 minutes. That's how you know that the, the person um, Okay. It's having a regular contraction. I think we should, uh, some will ask about the meaning of this contraction. Some, a lot of women out there, they don't know what is contraction. They don't know when they are having this contraction. They keep on hearing contraction, contraction, but they don't know how it looks like. So, Doc, I want you to just break it down, how it suffers, how someone should feel when you're having contraction. Good. So, in those people that are having contractions related to pregnancy, what many women complain about is pain, lower abdominal pain and tightness. Some of them tell you that they have back pain. The pain feels like there's tightening of the lower abdomen. Some of them, yes, yes. Some people even compare it to the menstrual cramps that they have, but this is way worse and it is regular. It does not respond to normal pain relief. It is regular and it is frequent. If you check very well and you decide to check within 10 to 15 minutes, you notice that you'll be having at least one, two, every 10 minutes apart. That's when you know that you are actually having contractions. Yes, you can have similar contractions in other situations, like in case where you have forced labor. But the difference between that and the contraction that might be likened to a true labor is the frequency and the regularity of of that on that pain why is uh, contractions in early pregnancy important any contract a contraction is required for us to to for a mother to deliver a child in order for a woman to go into the man for her to be able to deliver a child the mother needs adequate uterine contractions and so we expect contractions to happen only when the pregnancy is at term. 
But in the situation where the pregnancy is not at 10, either in the first trimester or the second trimester, then there is a problem. It means that the pregnancy is trying to come out when we don't want it to come out. Okay. Yes, it's trying to come when no one, uh, the baby is trying to come out when we don't want it. And if we term baby, the issues associated with prematurity is enormous and we would rather prefer to make sure we ensure that we reduce those as much as possible. So in your first trimester, eight weeks, 12 weeks, 20 weeks, 25 weeks, 34 weeks, you start noticing things that looks like a cramping pain. Please present to the hospital for you to be examined so that proper care will be given to you. I have a, a comment here from, from Adora. Uh, like when uh, you are trained up, you feel liquid coming out from you, vagina, to you, due to pressure of vomiting. Is this the water coming out? Uh, just like I said, and I mentioned clearly, if you are not sure of what uh, of the water coming out, you at all please present to the hospital. Like I said, like what drainage happens without any form of uh, without any uh, any form of uh, impulse, nothing pushes the light bulb to come out. On you, it happens spontaneously. That's what I mean. Which means you can be walking and water can come out. Yes, sometimes you can have pressure. And that pressure, if you are not sure if it is urine that is coming out, just come to the hospital. For meeting years can make you make you want to pee or poo, depending it's on how pressure. much years yeah, due to pressure. But if you notice that this water is coming out unprovoked, and you are not sure if this is urine or water, and if it is not, and if it is persistent, come to the hospital so that we can check and make sure that it is not like hot drainage. Let's not take chances. So um, uh, another danger sign is abdominal pain. Another common presentation in labor is abdominal pain. And abdominal pain in pregnancy can mean a lot of things. The danger and the most common ones that we are worried about when you have abdominal pain in pregnancy, we've mentioned them before, preterm contractions, abrupt show placenta, preterm labor. Yeah. Even severe preeclampsia. Once you have blurring of vision, headache, leg swelling, and you touch and you notice that you're having some abdominal pains, please come to the hospital. Let's check. Severe preeclampsia can be, in fact, at the level where you're having abdominal pain, is an indication that you're already having features of end organ damage. You're already at the point where it's beginning to affect your organs. Other conditions that can come in abdominal pain in pregnancy okay. uh, commonly is heartburn. Yeah. Women come and say, I have heartburn all the time. Uh, my chest is spinning, is hot. And of course, you can give antacid for them. Those ones are mild. Give antacid, you advise on um, lifestyle changes. You can go for just take your antacid, make sure you eat small portions, make sure once you are lying on your back, you lie flat up. Don't, uh, once you eat, don't wait, don't rush to go and lie down. Wait for at least four uh, to six hours sitting up, sitting up before you go and lie. Eat small portions, eat food with less fat, um, food that are less peppery, food uh, meals that contains ginger, carbonated things. And more of more of things. Yes, yes, and those are likely to reduce your reflux. Other conditions, appendicitis, intestinal colis are likely to be associated with um, abdominal pain. But more often than not, once it happens, especially in pregnancy-related conditions, preterm contractions, preterm labor, abruptual placenta, and the things you are thinking about. So you have abdominal pain that is persistent and looks like a contractile pain, continuously happening in frequent, in, in frequent bounds, come to the hospital and most likely have a contraction. You notice abdominal pain, you notice vaginal bleeding, Come to the hospital, it might be an abruptual placenta. Even severe implantsia, you notice blurring of vision, persistent headache, like not responding to paracetamol. You've taken, uh, you, you've noticed your legs are swelling, uh, and then you are either on BP medications and somebody check and notice your BP is high. Rush to the hospital is already a sign that there's a danger going on. Please present to the hospital. Please bring me to ask questions. So um, please, he, um, 
Just to summarize again, uh, like I said, pregnancy comes with all sorts of experience. Experience are different for people and they are also different for pregnancies. While there are so many good experiences, there are also some unfavorable experiences. The nausea and the vomiting, the vaginal bleeding, the abdominal pain, the headache, dizziness, a sudden gush of water that is unexpected at early pregnancy, um, and then the fact that you cannot perceive fetal movement. These are very key to the survival of the baby and also for be able to maintain a healthy mother. Once you notice this, please book an appointment with your doctor as fast as possible and present to the hospital as much as possible. Your ability to make those prompt decisions is what is going to decide between the outcome of a very good pregnancy or a pregnancy with complications. Thank you very much for this sharing this experience with you. I'm happy for those of you that are pregnant who are part of this um, a webinar today and we continue to pray that God will sustain your pregnancy. Thank you so much for sharing this platform with us. Thank and you once, very much. Yes, once again, I'm Dr. Aduba and this is Mosfera. Nice so please uh, keep the question coming and give time so that I can ask all your questions. Feel free to ask please, us please, anything please. you are confused about, please do put it on the page yes, and let us know so that we can uh, respond. Nice. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, um, can somebody has a question. Can prolonged contraction at 32 weeks lead to placenta failure? Uh, well, to thank you for this question, um, Ms. Dami. Prolong, uh, at placenta previa, just like I mentioned, is that the placenta, if you know what the placenta is, like I mentioned earlier, is the abnormal positioning of the placenta in the uterus. So the placenta is supposed to be somewhere up close to the, in the uterus, close to the uh, chest, but the placenta is covering the entrance of the uterus, that's the cervix. And so for that reason, where the baby is supposed to pass, the passage of the baby is blocked by the placenta. Uh, prolonged contraction does not cause placenta previa, but any prolonged contraction at 32 weeks is a sign of a preterm labor, and so you should present in the hospital. Let me uh, explain myself again. Because the placenta is covering the entrance of the cervix, the baby cannot come out. And if there is any attempt for the baby to come out, it's going to lead to excessive bleeding because the placenta has a lot of blood vessels surrounding surrounding it. So one of the symptoms you're likely to experience from placenta fever is that at your third trimester, that's between the last three months of your pregnancy, you notice abnormal bleeding from anything. Sometimes walking around can cause bleeding. Sit up, you sit up and stand up and you notice bleeding. And then when you go and check on the sign, you notice that the placenta is not located at where it's supposed to locate. It's blocking the, the cervix. So Prolonged contraction, on the other hand, at 32 weeks is not a good thing. Just like I said, any contraction that is not happening at 37 weeks of gestation is considered to be a preterm contraction. 
any prolonged contraction at 37 weeks, uh, at 32 weeks present in the hostel, it is not a direct cause of placenta previa. The cause of placenta previa is different. Even the presentations are different. In placenta previa, you have unexplained heavy vaginal bleeding at tri third trimester. In prolonged contraction, you have abdominal pain and cramping pains that are occurring frequently um, at early pregnancies. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Dami. I don't know if I have um, been able to um, enlighten you on your question. I want to say something about this. Okay. When someone has been diagnosed of placenta previa, it doesn't come with uh, some of the cases, it doesn't come with a uh, contraction. The early sign is that the blood coming out from the vagina. As doctor said, some women don't experience contraction in placenta previa. Please, anytime you notice blood, you don't need to wait for contraction to show before you start coming to hospital. Once there's a drop in the, your private part, please come to hospital. Thank you. Okay, so there is another question from Mrs. Sarah um, Akombi. Uh, Akin Lavi, sorry. In my second trimester, I have had a lot of heartburn and dizziness in the past. In the past, okay, I'm in my second trimester and I have had a lot of heartburn and dizziness in the past two days. Should I be too worried about it? Uh, well, uh, if you're having heartburn and dizziness, like I mentioned earlier, signs of severe preeclampsia, persistent headache that is unresponsive to pain relief, blurring of vision or dizziness or um, epigastric heart pain. In this case, we want to know, is your blood pressure high? Are you having leg swelling uh, or you understand? And stomach pain. If you're having dizziness and epigastric pain, I would advise that you come to the hospital, let us check your blood pressure, at least to rule out any signs of severe preeclampsia before we consider managing other causes of dizziness and heartburn. I don't know if I've explained. Yes, people can have heartburn in pregnancy, it is common. But one of the common causes of abdominal pain is preeclampsia. And in severe cases, you have a pregnancy pain that looks like a heartburn. And they have blurring of vision, headache, along with the abnormally high blood pressure, protein in urine, and all that. So if you think that you are, if you are having heartburn and dizziness, my advice is, if, it's, if you have a BP machine at your home, quickly check your blood pressure. If it is normal, then you can just present, let's look at the cause of heartburn and manage. If it is not normal, then please present to the hospital as fast as possible. If you don't have a BP machine, come to the hostel, we will check and, and, and try to let you know uh, and manage you appropriately. Thank you. There is another question from Aisha Ahmed. Hello, sir, please, how do you know when you start having labor at 30 weeks, like what is the sign? Thank you. Well, first things first, 30 weeks is, is a third trimester pregnancy, but it is not a term pregnancy, understand? So we mentioned earlier, labor at 30 weeks, it means that you're having lower abdominal pain that is cramping in nature, cramping lower abdominal pain that is persistent and it is happening in frequent bouts. You are having lower abdominal pain, it's persistent, it is worsening, and it is happening in frequent bout. It can even come with back pain also. I mentioned that back pain is also one of the indications that you might be having some preterm labor. So if you have lower abdominal pain that is cramping, happening frequently in bounds. Frequently means that it might be happening, you might be experiencing the pain, it waxes and wanes every 10 to 15 minutes. In 10 minutes time, you are better. In another 10 minutes time, you're having severe pains. 10 minutes time is best. And having another pain, you're having two to three pains in 10 minutes. Please, you are having pretend contractions and you should come and let's check and find out why at 30 weeks. If it is 37 weeks and above, which is full term pregnancy, congratulations, you are probably about to go into labor. But if it is less than 30 weeks, so please present to the hospital, let's check and find out why and see how we can help you now. Thank you. And there's another question from Ms. Uh, Olua Tomi. What are the safe natural ways to induce labor at 30, 
eight weeks in pregnancy in, in the primary gravida. The truth is that we, we don't encourage anybody to induce labor at home. Your body is designed to tell you when you are going to go into labor yeah. at uh, 10. Just eat your normal food, eat healthy, and your body will go into labor when it is ready. Yes, it is expected that by 37 weeks of gestation, your body, your, your body will begin to adjust itself in preparation for labor. Yes, once you get to 40 weeks and above and there are no signs of labor, present to the hospital and then we'll look for ways to either it will induce the labor depending on what you find out. But on your own, I don't think you should engage in any form of uh, ways to try to induce labor. Just eat healthy, drink a lot of water, do your normal things. If it is expected that your body naturally would send a signal for you to go to labor once you are ready. Thank and you I, very much. I want to say something, Mrs. Solu Atomi. Please don't do what uh, the other person do. Please don't take advice from your neighbor or your sister. Take this, take this. It will make the labor start. Please don't hesitate. Once you have the pain, come to hospital. Don't go for anything to take before you start having the labor. Please rush to hospital for uh, for checkup, okay? So, um, I don't know if there are more questions. Um, in the absence of more questions, I want to thank you once more for participating in this webinar. Please, if you have questions, comments, please drop it on our website um, and we'll add, uh, respond to those questions. Also, feel free to call the hospital at any time. There is always going to be a doctor to respond. And if you are not sure, you can, as fast as you can, present to the hospital. Thank you once more, Dr. Aduba and Dr. Anos Vera. Thank you.